in this video I want to talk about the global readiness for this fourth industrial revolution. We are now seeing huge technological change and I am here with Andrew Williamson. You are the economic advisor to Huawei, one of the global tech organizations and every year you do a study that looks at how ready different countries are, different economies are, the impact of different technologies on, on all of this. So I would love to learn more about the, the index you're producing and what some of the key findings were. So maybe we can start by just exploring what this index is and what it is for and how it is helping Huawei and how it's helping other businesses and maybe country leaders too. Great. Well, so the Global Connectivity Index is something that Huawei has done now for five years. Mm -hmm. uh, something we're very proud of. It's one of our leading thought leadership projects. And it's really, um, it's, it's, it's a measure, it's a quantitative measure. We try to keep it um, as unsubjective as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quantitative measure, as I say, across 40 different indicators that try to measure the progress that countries are making around the world in terms of the digital economy. Actually, we're now calling it the intelligent economy and the index has evolved over time. Um, but as I say, it tries to measure across essentially four pillars mm -hmm. um, and then across the latest technologies, which we think of general purpose technologies like AI, the internet of things and cloud computing. Um, and it's all measured, as I say, in a kind of a quantified way mm -hmm. so that we can measure countries' performance against their peers, but also this evolvement over time. And what do you think this index is, is telling you or what is, what, is, what is it telling the world? Well, it's, it's, telling, us, it's telling us many things because there are, there are kind of uh, rival indexes and rankings out there. Some of them have kind of fallen by the wayside, but what it does is it informs us as a company about where the opportunities and challenges lie mm. for specific um, countries. But also we feel it's kind of a contribution to the debate. So it's something that we also use and inform uh, policy makers, other stakeholders mm. um, about the progress that's happening because we really want to try and measure it against kind of economic progress. And the latest CGI has just come out, right? And um, the Global Connectivity Index. So um, this is available for anyone to download, right? It's all available on our website, yeah, yeah. on the Huawei.com. Good. So this year, I, I think, has been refocused on AI as a major correct, technology yeah. trend. So and you look at some of the the feeding technologies, 5G broadband, and, and where we are with all of this, and how this is how companies are getting ready for this digital transformation. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the key findings for this year? Well, the key, some of the key findings are that we are making progress internationally. Mm -hmm. So we see those scores improve over time. We've set kind of benchmarks and maximums that we think are plausible um, estimates and forecasts going mm -hmm. out se several years. So the good news is that progress is being made across all countries. But something that we've noticed is really a key finding for this year that we've looked in kind of uh, retrospective of previous year's data mm. is that the uh, leading countries are really now breaking away from the rest of the group. Okay. So there's a worrying kind of digital divide that's opening up in as much as the, um, the, the, the trailing countries have improved their scores, but not really at the rate that we're seeing with the, um, the front runners. Okay, so the front runners, who are some of the front runners? So, well, the front runners are, you know, perhaps it's no, it's no surprise, actually the US has come top this year is followed by Switzerland. Mostly it's OECD countries. Right. Tends to be ones that do well in other measures such as the World Economic Forum's uh, competitiveness index. Yeah. So there's no big surprises. Perhaps some of the surprises are that, you know, saying that some of the um, OECD countries look to be falling behind. Okay, so they're going into kind of the second group of those is countries like Italy, okay, Belgium, that aren't really making an, um, as much advantage and use of these you know really potential uh, impactful new technologies and some of the emerging countries who would you highlight there well we like to highlight this year uh, bulgaria okay so bulgaria has leapt 
eight positions in our index and it's really because it's put down a lot in terms of the foundational um, um, aspects of the index that we've tried to measure but it's really made huge improvements in terms of broadband mm -hmm. it's a kind of broadband that's underpinning all these other uh, types of applications and technologies because it's adhered to a national infrastructure program for broadband and it's trying to hit uh, the very the best practices in the rest of the European Union in terms of coverage uh, and also speed so it's really done a very good job of putting that into place. Where does China sit on, on, on the spectrum? So China is now really moving up the rankings quite rapidly. Um, it's still in the kind of the middling middle group, yeah. uh, but it's rapidly approaching um, a, a position that would put it into the front runners. And okay. we, we're really seeing that because it's investing a lot. I think this is, you know, this is a well-known story, but it's really pushing ahead in terms of artificial intelligence and creating companies, but also patents as well. So China is really leading in the world, as we know, in Internet of Things, um, really in terms of patents and companies and unicorns that are forming. Um, it's a very clear um, kind of rival is keeping up, certainly mm -hmm. with the European Union, but even the United States. So I, I guess for businesses, you would want to invest in, in those countries where you see the, 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 the biggest potential, right? And at the moment, is some of the forerunners that are um, pulling ahead of everyone else. Some of them, some of the countries like China are catching up very fast. They will be there soon. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the, what this then means. So the impact of this technology It's all well and good having all of this great infrastructure in place, being ready for this new fourth industrial revolution. What's the economic impact of all of this? Is this driving productivity? In your in your keynote earlier today, you mentioned the productivity paradox. Maybe you can talk about this a little bit more. Yes. Yeah, so this is something that we've um, that we've clearly seen that we've got these these improvements in the in the scores for global connectivity index. But clearly there is a kind of a paradox that exists that we are, it feels like we live in a very highly technological age. Mm. And certainly, you know, there's lots of buzz about artificial intelligence, the fourth industrial revolution. Keener observers can challenge technology companies and say, this is all great, but we know that we've suffered from very low economic growth rates since the financial crisis. In fact, productivity, labor productivity, in countries like the UK, but many other countries in, in the European Union, and actually everywhere around the world, has suffered a real slump in terms of productivity growth. Um, so, you know, there is a big debate in economics about the reasons for this. Mm. A, lo a lot of it is about mis mismeasurement issues, but actually lots of economists are now coming around to the idea that what happens for these industrial revolutions is essentially a lag period, a digestion period, where truly transformative technologies take a long time mm. for companies, for society, for the economy to really work out the best way to use that. Um, and actually, I, I showed a chart which shows a, a, an uncanny resemblance for when electrification and the internal combustion engine was rolled out in the US, mm. uh, which, which maps and correlates very closely to what we've experienced uh, in the last few decades. So you get these kind of phases and a type of S-curve in terms of economic impacts. And now many economists think the next decade will be one where we see a real kind of resumption and revival of productivity growth. Mm. So what do you think this means for the, the index of the future? Where if you were to predict the index over the next few years, what would you expect to see? Well, I think we're going to see um, what we, we see now as tentative signs, but we see that there will be, um, we call them tipping points or thresholds. So it will look like that across the kind of the, you know, the, the underlying technologies that we measure, there are certain um, scores, mm -hmm. which mean that you suddenly get large and increasing returns to investment. So we kind of talked about that in the report this year mm -hmm. in terms of um, Internet of Things, cloud computing, they really need to come together first, mm. hit these thresholds, before a country and the companies in a country can really benefit um, from the combination of all these general purpose technologies. So how can business leaders and even, even governments use the index? What can they learn from this? What are some of the key insights they can take from it? And, and maybe also how, what, what is Huawei learning from it? What, what, what do you take out of those insights? 
Well, I think some of the key insights are clearly that um, there's, a, there's a lot that needs to be um, done in terms of um, not just investment in infrastructure, but also in the kind of the user case um, and looking at the potential of these new technologies. So really, you know, all we can do is provide that kind of benchmark um, and scores and calculation for governments to see where they're doing well. And this is all available on the website. We talk about, you know, where countries are doing particularly well, but also where they're facing deeper challenges. Mm. So really it's kind of a contribution to the discussion. Um, but we also try to um, highlight that it isn't necessarily a country versus country type thing, that a lot of the ways that these technologies are coming together will create new global knowledge chains, mm. global value chains. Um, and we talk about that in the report and we give some examples of how, you know, data collectors, ICT companies, decision makers, all come together in this kind of ecosystem. And if, we, as, if we're sure to not put barriers in place across countries, mm. um, then many different types of you know, developing countries, but also advanced economies and the companies within them can really benefit from all these different types of interactions and, and technologies. Great. Thank you so much. That was Thank very you. useful.